Global Broadcasting Networks presents Military Mom Talk Radio. We know behind every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine is the family supporting them. With over 200 episodes in 17 countries, over five seasons, with three million monthly listeners, we are Radio Strong. Now here are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we've got a wonderful show today. We're going to talk about veteran caregivers. We're going to talk about taking care of ourselves, taking care of others, taking care of our our veterans, our spouses, our active duty service military. I mean, we've just got a a load of people to take care of, don't we, Rob? (laughs) A load is correct. You know, it's true. We've often talked about um, the family serves, not just the military military person, not just the, the enlisted person, but it's the whole family who serves. And I think military families is the operative word. We're, we're talking with a big group of people here. We are. And, you know, when we talk about caregiving, um, we talk about so many things from our health to our wellness, to our sleep, to our um diet and nutrition and mental state. There's so much that goes into Mm -hmm. taking care of ourselves both as caregivers and as caregiving to others. I mean, I don't even know if I'm using the word right. Well, it's true. I I think there are, um, we've always been told you've got to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. And I think it's, it's so true even more so than the military. There's a certain amount of, uh, strength and endurance. I think that military families have that, uh, maybe uh, others have not had to experience um there's there are a lot of areas that i think that we um we do have to focus on sleep you said was one of them didn't you sandra well, absolutely, because I think one of the things that happens in the military family is we're used to toughen it out. We're used to, mm-hmm. I can do it, I don't need it, I don't need to eat, I don't need to sleep, I don't need to, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, I don't need to ask for help, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. <laughs> you know, we hear this again and again, and, you know, it's almost like an admission of failure to admit we need to sleep, eat, use the restroom, whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we want to address and put right on the table here, because sleep is really important. It really is. And you know, Sandra, we want to, uh, uh, focus a little bit today on sleep. Um, and I don't know if you have had the uh, fortune, have you been able to visit a sleep number store in your area? I did. I was blown away. I mean, Rob, I went in there. I really didn't know what to expect. And to be honest, I had seen the commercials on TV. I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. Like another yeah. commercial. Yeah. But when I went in there, I it was I had so much fun. First of all, let me just tell you how much fun I had. I went into the <laughs> Palmdale. You know, it's out near Edwards Air Force Base. I uh-huh. went in the Palmdale store. And I felt right at home because there was a couple of military personnel in there at the same time. So I'm like, oh, this is good. Yeah. But I had no idea how much like technology and like it was my nerdy little heart all you know aflame because there was so much technology behind a good night's sleep well there is and you know sleep number is proud to announce that this is their 10th annual military appreciation event that they're having right now in honor of the u.s servicemen and women who have sacrificed uh to uh keep us all free and keep us all um, um free americans and i want to uh let you know that um right now they're having a, a special for veterans as well as active military so one of the reasons why we, um, I'm so excited that you had a chance to go in. I did too. I think it's wonderful the way they're, they're able to just sit and sit down with you, understand how you sleep, understand with whom you might be sleeping and be able to customize your sleep experience so that it is your optimal sleep, uh, opportunity to sleep is what I'm trying to say. Well, you're so funny because you're all about the good stuff. I'm all about like, okay, what's the special is the Charlie four mattress. And then I look (laughs) around, I'm like, Ooh, they, they support blue star families because it does take, you you know, it, it, you know, we all have to work together and we all have to give back. So I'm a big one. That's always like, well, what does the company do to give back? Like you get it. You're, you're giving us a great deal, Mm -hmm. you know, on the Charlie four mattress. Um, you know, that's all great. But then to see like right there in the store that they support our blue star families, like that was really cool. 
It was. It was right up front. They were so welcoming, San, and I'm sure the uh, folks out your way were too. When I went into the store, they were right there, so pleasant. They wanted to sit down and find out what my needs were, what my husband's needs were. And I said, well, <laughs> let me tell you, my my husband, who has uh, battled PTSD in and out for, for many, many years, uh, we do sleep very differently. Steve has his challenges. But they were able to address that. They were able to give Give us opportunities so that this side has a softer environment. The other side doesn't necessarily get jostled when when one rolls over. I love the way you have an independent um, sleep mattress. You you can adjust it to your very own number. What's your number, Sand? Did you get did you get your number? Yeah, I was a 45 and I was really funny, Rob, because I, I was like Allison in Wonderland or maybe Snow White. I had to lay in every bed in the store. Like I know that, you know, the, the special is the Charlie Four queen mattress, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I had to lay down on the foam one. Then I wanted to lay down in the heated one. Then I had to lay on the air conditioned one. You know, I <laughs> wanted to see it because, you know, I have slept on the same mattress for 25 years. It's oh, old. it's time the middle it's time Mm -hmm. so it was perfect for me to go okay I really don't know anything about mattresses and things have changed quite frankly in the last 25 years so come in and did you lay on the bed and look up at the computer screen that it showed like your precious points and it was was (laughs) (laughs) the minute they adjusted it to where you thought I was about a 35 because I really love I love the memory topper and they had one of those there they had a memory version as well but uh, I did lay on the C4 as well and that was so comfortable but one of the things that's really exciting is that right now if you visit your sleep number store uh, you can can save four hundred dollars on that C4 Queen mattress, and that they say is the lowest price ever. So it really is exclusive savings just for military and veterans. So uh, if you visit one of over five hundred Sleep Number stores nationwide between now and November fourteenth, uh, show your military or your veterans ID, and you will be able to take advantage of these exclusive offers. Well, and there's special financing available, and I have to be honest, like I I started looking at mattress prices because, you know, as a single mom with two kids taking care of my 82-year-old sure. veteran dad, I'm like, you know, I need to be smart with my money, and we all do. And what I was really surprised was is that these weren't crazy expensive. You know, they weren't, they weren't the cheapest on the street, but they weren't crazy expensive either. And I was like, I can actually afford this. And I thought, that's pretty neat. And with the, you know, with the military special, oh my gosh, even better. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you're thinking of getting a new mattress, and then... I just want to share the other thing that was so cool. I, the lady took me in the back because I was like, you know, you know, military and families move a lot. And, you know, how much does this weigh if we're going to ship these things? And, yeah. you know, it was like 100 or so pounds. And you could pack them up in a box, like a box that was like, you know, four feet by three feet. Like the whole thing comes apart. And I thought that was magnificent because when you think of the, you know, the weight allotments that you have to ship and then how much room mattresses take up to fold these up in these shippable boxes. Oh, yeah. And have way less than your traditional thing. I was blown away. I thought to me that was huge. Like if I'm moving and I've got to move, you know, what is the average family move 14 times in a military career? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And we can fold these things up and take them with us. Like that to me was really important. The Blue Star families, the, the portability and, you know, the idea that they're honoring our military with special offers just reserved for us made me feel really good. It does. It does. Well, we certainly want to invite everybody to visit um, a Sleep Number store near you. And if you're not sure where they are, their website is very simple. It's sleepnumber.com. And do check in with them. There are special financing available through November 14th, as well as that wonderful offer on the C4 Queen mattress. So I hope you go. And if you go, let us know what you think, because uh, we'd love to hear what numbers everybody is. <laughs> I know. It's like the bed. Do that thing where they make you lay on the bed and get your thing. Because yeah. at first I was like, oh, my gosh, my butt's going to be huge. But it wasn't. It was like my pressure points weren't where I thought they would be. I thought all my weight would be in my hips, but it but it wasn't true. Um, but that's for another episode. We'll do that in our right. health and fitness. Um, <laughs> We're going to welcome our guest today. I know we went a little bit long today, but we're going to welcome our guest today, uh, Linda Creter from Veteran Caregiver. And Linda, I want you to introduce yourself. And then when we go to commercial break, we'll get into the meat of what you want to share with us today. 
Sure, be glad to. Um, my name is Linda Crater, and I founded and run a program called VeteranCaregiver.com, which I believe is our topic of today. And one of the biggest things I also do is work with you, Sandra and Robin, in another radio program called Military Network Radio. And what we find is that people are not really understanding as much how the family does serve. So when you add our two shows together and you look at the tagline, which is everyone serves and together we make a difference, we're talking about the families, the parents, the spouses, the siblings, your friends, even your neighbors, because everyone does serve and the more we can spread the word on roles and how we can help each other, it really does make a difference. Well, just down the street from me, Linda, I have got an Air Force family that both both family members serve, and the grandparents actually mm-hmm. watch the kids, and they're taking them to school, and it's great because my dad's, you know, obviously helping me as a single mom. So that's the face of the military today. It's like everybody, you know, working together to try to help our servicemen and women do what they need to do, but yet still keep the family as stable as possible because that's really important. It's critically important, and it is the single most um, underwhelming factor that people don't know about for the health of our veterans and their families. Um, well, wanna, Rob, when when um, now you didn't have kids when Stephen was deployed, did you? No, we did not. No, no you did not, Deb. So you didn't juggle that thing. Listen, I'm going to take us to commercial break. The uh, website for Sleep Number, in case you guys want to check out that Queen Charlie Four mattress, is uh, what is it? Sleepnumber.com. If you want to mm-hmm. log on and look at our guest today, go to veterancaregiver.com, Linda Crater. And we are going to talk about caregivers in all of their scope and all of their responsibility when we come back after the break. That's sleepnumber.com and veterancaregiver.com. This is Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd of Military Mom Talk Radio. We'll be back after the break. We've got lots more ahead. Stay with us on Military Mom Talk Radio. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors. All quilters, just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. Mike McMillan from Ontario, Canada, was driving to a meeting when he saw what looked like a can of cola moving around on the side of the road. Curious, he stopped to investigate and discovered a skunk had gotten its head stuck in a soda can. After a moment of abulia, or indecision, he decided to try and save the potentially woofy animal. Woofy is another word for smelly. He grabbed the can and engaged in dang swaying, or a cooperative tug of war with the skunk. All the while hoping he wouldn't get sprayed. Finally, the skunk managed to pop its head out of the can and land safely on the ground. After a brief stare down, the skunk turned and ran into the woods. What's another word for running away in fright? Funkify. It's marching down. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. We're back with more great conversation on Military Mom Talk Radio. Hey, Military Moms. I have to hum along with that every time because my dad is Navy and my dad's retired <laughs> Navy. And my cell phone rings. That song, you know, it's, it rings Anchors Away when he calls. So I'm like, Anchors Away. And I just totally forgot for a minute that we're on oh, the radio. Oh, how funny. <laughs> 
But I do like those custom ringtones. We should sing along with everything. That just we means you're should. happy. That's wonderful. Yeah. Happy, happy, happy. Um, well, we're talking today about, about caregivers, veteran caregivers in specific. And now, Rob, Rob, you're married to a, a Vietnam veteran, and I care for my dad, Korean War veteran. Yes. And I will tell you mm-hmm. right up front, it's a big deal. And... When I look at my other veteran family friends that care for elderly or Mm -hmm. even our young veterans, it's an enormous responsibility, an enormous Mm -hmm. task. And I'm so glad that Linda Crater is here today from Veteran Caregiver to talk about that. Linda, how many veteran caregivers are there out there? Because I look in my neighborhood and there's a ton. There's over five and a half million across the country. At least. Just the post-9-11 number is 1.1 million. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a massive group of people That's that remarkable. don't know about. Right. Well, do I like, are, are most of the caregivers like you, like they, they run burnout, they run, like, I just, I can't do one more thing. Like, you know, I think there's a lot of them like me that fall in that sandwich generation. We've got elder care issues and then I've got child care issues. Like I'm stuck in the middle. I think it's called the sandwich generation. It's called the sandwich caregiver. And mm-hmm. yes, there are many of those, but what's very interesting is that some of the different conflicts bring different care issues. And so you don't have the uniformity that you might expect. So you say, okay, the post 9-11 caregivers do these five things and the Korean uh, caregivers do these five things. Each and every caregiver has a different situation, but I'd rather take a step back and talk about the fact that so many of our military families, the caregivers don't self-identify. They say, well, I'm a military spouse. Um, and they, they don't say that they're a caregiver. They don't acknowledge that that may be another title that they, or role or hat they wear. And so, so many times there are people out there who are not identifying as caregivers, yet they're doing exactly what you're saying, taking care of an aging, um, veteran. My well, dad's Air Force, me too. My dad's Air Force. My uncle is Army. Um, there's mm-hmm. a lot going on in most every family. It's very interesting. But the issues that they take care of are very different. And the stress and strain that falls on them is unique. But one is not worse, better than the other. They're just different. And they carry a lot of weight on their shoulders. And I know we talk about how difficult, I can't go one more stay, etc. But may I state up front that these caregivers are some of the most resourceful, amazing, strong women and men that I have ever worked with. Well, Rob, don't you, and I, you know, I'm just going to speak well, I think for they, myself, but, oh, I'm sorry, Rob. I just wanted to say, I didn't identify myself as a veteran yeah. caregiver mm-hmm. until today's show. Do you think of yourself as that, even though that's what we do? I have it kind of twofold because not only am I a caregiver for my husband because I I am his wife, but I also was a caregiver to an elder for 20 years. So the role um, was almost dual because there were needs that my husband had and there were needs that my mother had. And some of them, but what I was just going to pipe up and say was that you're off operative word in your um, explanation a moment ago, Linda, I think was resourceful because we may be faced with something. Uh, our, our spouse it might be uh, active military. They may come back from a deployment. They, and then their uh, your needs are going to be very different right then caring for them. Then all of a sudden when they're finally um, severing and they're uh, reintegrating your needs, are you're going to have to be very resourceful to uh, meet the needs then. And then, of course, 10, 15 years down the road, there are going to be some differences. There are things that are going to erupt and come back. And you're going to have to find a different way to uh, be that supportive caregiver. Um, Resourceful, definitely. Definitely, definitely resourceful. Well, you know, the interesting part is that when uh, someone 
signs onto the military and raises their right hand and takes the oath. They are the ones that are signing up for the military. But what people don't realize is the family is also serving and the family doesn't have quite the same uh, mm-hmm. support network, the camaraderie. They do have wonderful networks of male spouses and, and even caregivers have uh, networks among themselves. But when you stop to think about these long, long years of war and, and frankly, the history of war in general, there's always caregivers. There's always been changes after war. There are things that have to be adjusted to. And and caregiving is a very difficult one. We will all be or need a caregiver someday, military or not. And so knowing more about what caregivers do and recognizing the needs that caregivers have is a very important part of understanding how you can help and how caregivers can help themselves in many ways. Well, and is this a new thing, mm-hmm. Linda? Like, I'm sorry. Like, I just look at myself as a kid taking care of her dad. Like, my friend, you know, Ginger, whose dad is a Chosan Reservoir survivor, and he's got lots of issues, and she's just a kid taking care of her dad. And, you know, Robin's a wife taking care of her husband. Like, I never really thought about myself as a caregiver, you know, because when I think of caregivers, I think of, oh, somebody's in a wheelchair or somebody's, you know, really critical. But then when I stop to think about today's show, and Rob, I wonder if you had the same thing. Yeah, there's a lot that we do that we wouldn't normally do, you know, because of the service in the military. Absolutely. It's it's exacerbated. Yeah, it's exacerbated because you're, you're piling on war experiences, which changes everyone, Mm -hmm. there is always a mirroring that I shouldn't say always, that's a generalization, but there is most often uh, changes within the dynamics of the family, whether it's communication or engagement or the medical uh, realities of it. Because if you come back, and especially in our most recent veterans, because the op tempo was so high and so many deployments with out really the understanding at the other end when they came home of how to treat, help, and support, you end up with some really tough issues that become chronic. And because of the sheer numbers that we're talking about, the agencies are having difficulty managing the sheer stream of veterans returning, active duty needing care, and then the family members who are absolutely vital to the health outcomes because there is both a, a moral obligation that we have to support our veterans for their service, but there's also, interestingly enough, because government likes to make things in terms of money, it is actually beneficial to the health outcomes from a financial standpoint as well as moral and family standpoint when the supported. So the outcome for the veteran on the health and well-being side is enhanced by supporting the caregiver. Hmm. You know, so many times I think the term caregiver, we assume that that means, oh, someone who's been injured and can't take care of themselves. But we're really talking about how do we help uh, our veteran or our military person be um uh, be, feel productive, feel good, or be able to work through the things that they might feel as challenges. And certainly, I think every ser- single person comes out of the military with some kind of uh, challenges, whether it be sleep, whether it be uh, things that they keep holding inside and can't talk about. It doesn't necessarily mean um, those physical or or immediate impairments it might just mean that we have to find the ways to help them through the VA system help them through um, some sleep issues and, and being able to be lis- the, the listening ear behind them you're absolutely right but caregiving can be all encompassing Mm. It can be a, a double-edged sword. You are there to support, <laughs> help with the uh, you know, activities of daily living because in the case of traumatic brain injury or severe PTSD, it, it may be a very long road that you are walking and not every treatment works for every person, just like no drug works for every person either. So caregiving, you work on the supportive side, but consider the military culture where it's can do, I don't need the help, um, I'm, I'm okay mm-hmm. with the resulting 
sometimes dependency, loss of control, Mm -hmm. um, needing to depend on someone else. It can be a, a very tricky situation and the caregiver and the family children included, walk a very fine line sometimes as they work to adapt to what is hopefully a temporary situation, but in terms of some of our recovering injuries, a permanent long-term situation. But I think it gets even more confusing because I think of my ex-father-in-law, and he's passed away now, but he was a pilot in World War II. We've had significant issues over there. Then you got Korean, you know, in our house. Then you have, you know, Vietnam and Gulf War vets. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got things, you've got injuries that are emotional, are inside, they're not always visible, and then you go, well, what what, what part of that is aging? What part of it is vet issues? Like, it, it's really complicated. It's, like, all bundled up into, like, I, I don't even, like, I'm more confused now than when we started the show. Well, you're bringing up the very point that makes it very difficult to get good treatment. So what's the number one injury for all veterans of every era? Do you know? Battle fatigue, shell shock. No, it's actually hearing loss. Oh. Mm-hmm. So hearing loss and tinnitus is the number one. Um, battle fatigue, uh, combat fatigue, uh, PTSD, that's obviously another big one. Mm-hmm. But it runs the gamut of issues to the emotional health issues, and it is really mm-hmm. difficult. And I think sometimes the most basic ones, such as hearing loss, is almost as a given in the VA. So we'll, we can talk, I know we're coming up on a break shortly, but mm-hmm. just the variety of conditions make it challenging to get care because the medical system is siloed into specialties. It is, and it's so difficult sometimes to know quite how to navigate, and there again, uh, that resourcefulness does come in. Uh, we're talking today with Linda Crater. She is the founder and CEO of VeteranCaregiver.com, and we're delighted to have her with us today. We have lots more with her, so do stay tuned. We have a commercial break coming up. We're here on Military Mom Talk Radio today, Linda Uh, Crater is our guest. Sandra Beck and I will be back with you shortly, right after the break, on Military Mom Talk Radio. We've got lots more ahead. Stay with us on Military Mom Talk Radio. hear about Wesley, the golden retriever puppy from Michigan that was fitted with braces? Before you think this is a bona fide insanity, Wesley was born with teeth that were so crooked he couldn't shut his mouth all the way. This was affecting his ability to eat properly. So his owners took him to the Harborfront Hospital for Animals and Veterinary Dental Solutions, where a doggy orthodontist prescribed him a set of braces. And now, pictures of Wesley smiling with his bright, shiny braces have been circling the Internet. With all that metal wrapped around their teeth, some would think that most dogs would become bruxomaniacs, but not Wesley. He doesn't mind the braces at all and is now able to eat his food with gusto. A bruxomaniac is someone with an uncontrollable urge to grind their teeth. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. If you're ready for a big change in your work, your career, your happiness, your life, it's time for the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore discover and live your dreams by developing what she calls the million dollar mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the million dollar mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. For more information on the million dollar mindset, go to her website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A dot com. It's the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. We're back with more great conversation on Military Mom Talk Radio. 
Hey, moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we are visiting with Linda Crater, a veteran caregiver. Now, Linda, I got to be honest with you, okay? I have been on your Facebook page, and I have seen your Facebook posts. You do these veteran caregiver posts, and they're really good. Like, you guys, if you're listening, go on Facebook and look it up and check it out. Thousands of people watch these videos, and I have to be honest, I did not like see myself as a veteran caregiver until today's show. And you use the term self identify. And I'm like, that went over my head, like a big 747, like, I don't know what self identification is. And thankfully on the break, (laughs) you know, you explained to me like caregivers often don't self identify. And, you know, I was thinking about like, you know, when you're a veteran caregiver, like, like how much it is for like travel and, and getting medicines and, you know, picking people up and not being able to go on vacation and not being able to, to, to do these things or, or like like when I take my dad to soccer, it's like it takes me an extra 30 minutes just to get between the car and the chair and the water and the this and the that. You know, I just take it for granted and I just suck it up and do it. And I don't think of myself as somebody that's doing this veteran caregiver. And Rob, you are probably the same way. Truly the same way in that I'm a wife. I'm, I, I mean, I would think that a wife would do these kinds of things for her husband or, or a, a husband or their dad. Or her husband would do it for her wife. But there are certain elements that are a little bit different. And I kind of alluded to it in the last segment when it means sitting up in the middle of the night because um, my husband had a bad dream. And he had, I'm saying it lightly, it could be a nightmare. It could be physical. It could be violent in the middle of the night because he's reliving something that he was experiencing. Those are the things that I don't think um, we realize that we are being caregivers specifically veteran caregivers in those instances um and and those are huge because i i I gotta tell you it's been years since he's been home but he still has them well rob how many years has it been since he served like let's let's he came home he came home in 1970 Wow, I won't even say who was born that year, but me. Um, <laughs> as many years as I've been alive, yep. you have had, Stephen has had these recurrent nightmares. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I have to say that there were times that um, when his job was demanding, he probably was a little more overwhelmed with work than some of the memories. And that's what I meant about uh, there being different uh, times in your life that you need to sort of step up and be a caregiver in a different way. Because what, you know, back in 1970, 72, 74, 76, his needs were very different than what they are now as a retired man and having some physical issues and having some sleep issues and uh, fortunately he's still e- e- extremely uh, with it we certainly aren't having any cognitive issues but but the point being is is there are changes over the last 40 some odd years that we've been together it's just um, an evolution and they never stop it's going to be different but they never stop so that's where veteran care caregiving, you do need to find the the resources that you need as the caregiver so that you are strong to support that person in whatever those needs are. You're talking very truthfully, and yet the interesting part about the post-9-11 caregivers, because of the number of deployments, because the operational tempo was so fast, as they came back, there was so little transition time that most of them didn't turn off or even attempt to turn off because yeah. they were getting ready to go again. And so in the case of the 1.1 million post-9-11 caregivers, they are in many cases taking care of people who would not have survived prior wars. Mm-hmm. They have come back with advanced uh, medevac, uh, amazing medical uh, treatments and care that were not possible in previous wars. In the case of Desert Storm, that was our first Iraq war where the burn pits came to mind. So all of these respiratory things that came about that they are now talking about in the Gulf War Registry, Gulf 
illness, the syndrome that really has a variety of conditions that come together. Well, the lung These cancer are among my Navy SEAL friends. It's like two of them have lung cancer right. in there, and they know it's from the burn pits. Well, and the burn pits are still so new. It's not even going back as far as the Gulf War registry. So just as Agent Orange was in a registry and took 25 years before it was named as a presumptive condition, you're probably looking at the same thing. One of the biggest things that um, came back with this war were the prevalence, because of IEDs, you end up with the prevalence of traumatic brain injury from mild all the way to penetrating severe uh, and life-threatening. And those are very long-term caregiving things. So in terms of some of our caregivers, our veteran caregivers, they are taking care of nearly everything. They don't have the executive functioning left to decide that it, they, it's time to eat. It's time to bathe. It's time to do these various things. With prompting, sure, they, they can do that in most cases, but not always. And so you're looking at caregiving that is all-encompassing. And then if you add children to the mix or an older family member, you are looking at challenges. If you happen to have a child with special needs, which there's a high prevalence, interestingly, they're starting to find out that the stress of living with military um, family members that have PTSD, et cetera, and, and strain and depression and anxiety does change the amygdala, make brain neural uh, connections different. It even affects children with stress hormones that are not normally shown in children. So everyone is affected by the severity of the afflictions that people have and how much treatment they are getting. Now, Robin, in the case of uh, the Vietnam vets, so many of our vets, based on the culture in the country when we came Mm -hmm. back, they came back, did not receive VA care until later in life. Unfortunately, what that is showing is a higher prevalence of suicide than any other group. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and refusal, like with my dad, like he refuses to go to the VA for certain things. Like he's just like, I'm not doing it. Like I'm not going to ask for help. I'm not going to, you know, and that's a huge issue in our household because it's an, it's an ego thing. It's a pride thing. It's a, a, you know, and it's, it's, there's, it's so complicated. Like this whole thing is so complicated. Well, and then go right to what we were talking about before the break. Medical care is already segmented. So if you have a traumatic brain injury, that may mean you have hearing losses, cognition losses, balance and dizziness issues. You may have uh, comorbid, meaning you have it at the same time, uh, PTSD. You can have other medical conditions. You, we talked about the burn pits. There are a lot of GI issues that come, a lot of spinal ligament injuries. All these things require different specialists. And unless you have a care team that integrates your care and includes the caregiver as a a very included um, of the care team, there is huge paperwork and backtracking that the caregiver has to do to make sure that the care is going forward in, in a proper perspective and a progression as opposed to taking two steps back, one forward. Well, and I just want to jump in. I just want to say something and honor my, I've got a gal on my street, a good friend of mine who was Air Force and served, and she has back and neck injuries and a spinal injury from her mm-hmm. service. And she is caring for her husband who has his own set of issues and raising four boys at the same time. And that's a very typical picture of some of our military moms. They've, they're physically challenged, but they're still raising their children, still keeping their family together. You know, any even the single moms out there that serve that have these physical injuries or, or emotional wounds, I want to put a shout out and say, you go girls, because you're, you're keeping it, you're putting it together and you're doing it. And, you know, nobody's talking about that. They're not. And, and I think even things such as uh, we recently had Hurricane Matthew in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, families were very deeply affected. Imagine if you can't stand crowds. Change is impossible to manage. You have a routine that's affected. You have children. You have a huge force of nature coming down on you, and you need to evacuate, as they did, because it was a very serious Category 4 hurricane. Now put all those injuries together and put you together with crowds and crowds of families. It is no easy undertaking 
And once you go back, you've got to deal with the aftermath of that chaos. So whether it's the holidays that are changed, a 4th of July with fireworks and uncommon sounds that you can't stand anymore, there are so many things that people do not think about when they look at those who have served and those who are caring for those who have served. I think so many times the challenges are sometimes brought to you and you're not quite sure of that there even is an issue. Um, someone may not realize that uh, fireworks may set someone off or f- that being in an, a crowd unexpectedly is going to set off different stresses or different anxieties until you're in it and then, oh my goodness, I have this to deal with. And meanwhile, you've got the two-year-old that's, that's screaming and the four-year-old that's trying to run down the street. It's true. We do have to to uh, remember that there are going to be some things that come up that we weren't planning and there are going to have to be uh, some adjustments perhaps uh, in our family lives that we weren't planning or thinking that we needed to do. It's so difficult. Linda, we've got another break coming up. Um, on the other side of the break, I do want to talk about uh, maybe some steps or some resources that uh, our families can look toward. Uh, where can we tap into help? And I'm sure that the first First place to tap in to help is veterancaregiver.com, and that's uh, where Linda's website is. We want to make sure that uh, we have that opportunity. We certainly want people to uh, remember that we have a lot of podcasts uh, on our website, militarymomtalkradio.com. We've got over 200 in the bank, and we're really proud of these shows where we have brought many experts and many people uh, with some great advice. And Linda, when is your show on? On, um, on Toganet. When does your show air? We air every Tuesday from 10 to 11 Eastern Time. Great. We want people to go there too because you have had a plethora of amazing people on your show and uh, have brought so many issues to light and so many resources for people to to turn to. So by all means, we want to make sure that uh, we have people go there as well. well thank you. Um, don't forget, we are all on iTunes. Uh, Linda's show as well as our show, we're on iTunes. Uh, so if you're looking for a podcast and you're going for that long walk or that long drive, we're there to to uh, go along with you. We're going to be back with Linda Crater on the other side of this break here on Military Mom Talk Radio talking about veteran caregivers. We're here for you. We'd love to hear from you. Check us out at militarymomtalkradio.com or find us on Twitter and Facebook. Our shows are available on iTunes anytime from 0 hundred hours to 2359. For now, stay right where you are. There's more Military Mom Talk Radio after these messages. Welcome to Geraldine Tegelove Live, the show that shares with you the secrets of redefining, reinventing, and rebuilding your life. Having pulled herself from the rubble of financial ruin and having gone on to create a highly successful career, Geraldine has become an expert in the art of transformation. She believes that it doesn't matter where you are right now, how overwhelmed you feel, or how impossible the task of turning your life around may seem. You can do it. Stay tuned as metaphysician, international best-selling author, and intuitive Geraldine Tegelov gives you the inner understanding and the outer practical how-to to to create your amazing life. Gain a fresh perspective on how to redefine, reinvent, and rebuild your life. Join Geraldine Tegelov live every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Toginet Radio Network. about the Gabrielunzi bear caught rummaging through a refrigerator in an apartment in Colorado? The tenant heard noises coming from the kitchen and saw a bear with his head in the fridge looking for anything it could eat. What's a word for food that's unfit for human consumption? Ma wallop. The tenant locked himself in his bedroom and called for help. What's a word for the fear of bears? Ursophobia. We have lots of bears near our Colorado cabin, and we have been told that pepper spray will keep them away. But the idea that it would keep a 500-pound grizzly bear from attacking seems ridiculous to me. I think I'll try the pepper spray on myself and hope the bear doesn't like spicy foods. It's marching down the road. 
I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. We're back with more great conversation on Military Mom Talk Radio. Hey, Mamas, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and I'm going to rant, girls. You're just going to have to let me get on my soapbox for a second, (laughs) but I'm here to represent the 20% of women who serve in the military. We're one in five, and many of us are single moms. A lot of us are sandwich caregivers. We're we're children of military personnel, and we were maybe married to military personnel, and we're doing it all, And, and I've got, you know, friends of mine with health issues directly related to their service, women, moms directly related to their service, yet they are still taking care of their kids. They are still taking care of their parents. And then they might be even helping their husband. And, you know, because as women, we're like, the caregiver label. It's like, you know, we're moms, we're caregivers. I get that. But that's an enormous responsibility. And I want to shout out to the girls out there doing this. Like you go girls, keep it up. But there's a cost to all this, Linda. And I get so frustrated because I think the image of caregiver is like a mom or a sister or somebody that doesn't have any other issues and they just focus on the veteran. And it's like, yeah, but what about the veterans with their own issues, helping other veterans and then raising kids and like doing it all. Like that's a big part of what our military veteran landscape looks like today. Well, no, you're absolutely right. And women veterans have higher rates of homelessness, um, uh, joblessness, and anxiety, depression, suicidality. It is is very difficult. There is um, There are separate issues, and the VA has been slow to add female physicians and services, et cetera, they now do. So that part is good and has changed. Further changes need to be made. But frankly, singleton soldiers, airmen, uh, Marines, sailors, et cetera, uh, even custodies are getting the same amount of support because it's hard to self-advocate. So if you're the veteran, say it's the women veteran that you just mentioned, you have to self-advocate and that is much on someone else advocating for you. So the services are there for you. But think about your National Guardsmen, uh, your citizen soldiers, uh, your reservists. They may need lead regular lives, if you will, and then they come back from these multiple deployments and they need different kinds of help. And society needs to understand all that goes on on their behalf to keep them safe and to keep us both domestically and internationally um, on the mark. And so you're absolutely right. Caregiving is from the singleton all the way to uh, families that have lived with post-combat wounds for a very, very long time. So it is it is a huge gamut. But they there are good resources that are emerging. There are good organizations that are coming up with information. There's a lot more education. Um, one of the reasons I moved to videos was because I was answering the same questions on the phone over and over and over again, whereas I realized that there was a way to reach people in greater numbers by putting together short videos, because remember, caregivers have zero time, and they need it to be portable. And from the surveys in the military family world, 97% of all information for military families comes off their smartphones or tablets. So those of you well, who are listening out there. Well, not everybody reads. Like, let's be honest. Like, you know, not anybody True. has the time to. Can, it's time. Can it's, yeah. Work. It, it, well, it's the whole thing, I think. I think yes. it's beyond that. Some people just don't like to read. I come from a family of non-readers. Like, they will avoid reading at all costs, but they'll listen to something or they'll watch a video. Right. right. So if you bring it to them in various forms, whether it's the radio, whether it's videos, whether it's a blog post, um, you know, series of pictures, Facebook posts, uh, you name it, you will reach your group. Because there are a lot of things that you want to share with caregivers. You want to share education about the conditions and where they can go for help. So whether it's PTSD, TBI, dizziness, balance issues, hearing loss, tinnitus, anything. Um, You want to educate. You also want to inform them about how that's going to look like from the veteran side of things. So that you can stand in their shoes and hopefully that works in both directions. They can stand in yours as well. And that's one of the things we do on the radio show is we try and give it from a 360 degree perspective so that people understand 
PTSD, TBI especially, when you look at it from a veteran's perspective versus a caregiver perspective, it can look very, very different. There's a lot of denial that goes on. No, I don't have the problem. You do. Um, counseling is <laughs> difficult. There are not enough uh, therapists anywhere. So thankfully, uh, VA is moving to telehealth and Skype and, and all sorts of different leveraged technology as a means to provide care without these long, long, you've heard them, waiting times. Um, because in some cases, you don't have time to wait. You must address the issues. So there are many, if you simply Google information on any of those various topics, whether it's the conditions, education. Um, you also have to look at complementary and alternative therapies, what they call CAM, E-A-M, complementary and alternative medicine, because there are some Is that wonderful that yoga things. yoga and meditation? That's that yoga, that meditation, equine therapy, horses. Horses don't judge you or embarrass you. They have proven to be very helpful, service animals, sports, um, all sorts of mindfulness, uh, spiritual aspects. You, you really can explore other things that may work better. Plus, that puts a feeling of independence into the equation. And it gives a little bit of respite for that caregiver if they're engaged in doing another activity, especially when it's with other vets. Uh, same for caregivers being with other caregivers. That's a good thing as well. And then there's the self-care that everybody resists because that's the last thing on the list and – well, and a lot of times you're too tired to take care of yourself. You're too tired, and, and you need sleep. We're back to sleep, which I like to say sleep is like gold because it's just so rare. And it is very, very important, though, that there is something that makes you happy. Some people get respite through writing, journaling, uh, a gratitude journal, a walk around the block. Um, sometimes it doesn't mean being with other people. Sometimes it means being quiet, being still, meditating, prayer. It can be social. Uh, go to the coffee shop, meet with other people that you enjoy, find another caregiver who understands what you're going through. Talk to someone who isn't necessarily military. It doesn't need to be someone military who understands what's going on. They just need to be a good listener. And well, so if you, somebody, if something doesn't work, like I just want to chime right. in here, like when everybody sent me to yoga, all I wanted to do was punch that old man next to me. I mean, in all honesty, he was like <laughs> bending over. Right. I'm just like, this is not working. But I did go to Krav Maga and I punched and I kicked and I yelled and I got right. everything out that needed to be. Right. Um, but it took me a while to figure it out because everybody's like, you walk, meditate, do yoga. Well, I was like an exploding time bomb. Those weren't working right. for me. And I needed to figure out... And, you know, throwing a temper tantrum in a karate studio worked for me. You know, whatever works. And the same thing with respite, because people will say, you must take a break. Schedule your breaks. Well, that will get the biggest eye roll if you're not able to schedule a break because of the instability of the conditions at home. So what does respite look like when it can't be had by a vacation, a retreat or something fun? going out and sitting in the car, driving it down to the library parking lot and just closing your eyes and breathing. Go to a creek, uh, stand in a shower. People cry in the parking lot of Jack and Cry in the parking lot. <laughs> well, it whatever for me for works two for years. years. But it's critically important to find out what works for you because just because it worked for someone else doesn't mean it works for you. Mm. And so try new things. One of the most important things is, and I, I love this saying, try new things. Remember mm-hmm. the Titanic was built by professionals and the ark by amateurs. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So try new things. You know, not everything will work, but try to yourself five minutes at a time. Try and grow that to 15. Take it to 30. Take it to an hour. Once you realize the world will fall apart, take a little time for yourself. The guilt that may come with that will recede. And you know, Linda, so many important. times, I think when you had said Google uh, some uh, for some information before, sometimes that's overwhelming because you right. don't know what you're going to hit. You, you don't know what, where this, this True. source is. Are these real, are, are real people or are they just a scam? And one of the things on your website, uh, I love, you've got a page called resources. Mm-hmm. And I think this is such a wonderful place for people to start uh, because they do need Need to have at least somewhere to begin. It's very overwhelming to know where to go. It is, and those are all vetted resources. And what's also very interesting is with every single one of the videos, there's a, a recommended resource list that can be emailed straight 
box. Mm-hmm. Because again, we try and make it as painless and easy as possible to find out resources and where to go and what to find. So if you don't want to Google or don't have the time, just go. And that can give you a start on whatever it is that is your highest priority right now. Cause well, that- and I want to share my, my favorite like 30 second break when I'm ready to lose my mind. <laughs> I like to, cause everybody's got smartphones and tablets and it's right. not like we're not internet connected in most places, but I like to go to YouTube and type in like my favorite TV show and put bloopers or like I was watching the big bang theory bloopers and some friends bloopers, mm-hmm. you know, little things like that. It's two minutes of your time. I will laugh myself silly for like two minutes. And a lot of times it's in the bathroom, which is like the only place I can shut the door and keep everybody out but i can take that two minute break it doesn't cost me anything it's not adding weight it's not right. doing anything other than taking me out of that situation for a couple minutes allowing me to laugh and then go back and releasing endorphins and oxytocin and all sorts of helpful things that are very very good for your brain and so laughter is good medicine i just like it because it's free and cheap that works too <laughs> I think it's wonderful to know that, Linda, you are there at the other end of of a podcast or a telephone just to be able to say, yes, there is an affirmation. Yes, there's help. And yes, there are resources so that tomorrow is going to be joyful. The day after is going to be joyful. Doesn't mean that uh, 24 hours of joy. Maybe there's a little blip in between, but we're going to have the strength to get there. And, and I know so many uh, people have benefited from all that you have done, whether it be on your videos, whether it be on your blog or your Facebook page. You have given so many people that relief and that confidence that, yes, I can do it. So on behalf of all of them, Linda, thank you so much for the, the things that you have uh, been driven to do because that has gotten so many people uh, into tomorrow that didn't think tomorrow would ever be possible. Robin, you're most kind. Thank you. Well, and Rob, let's like give ourselves some props here at Military Mom. We validate each other. We comfort each other. We support each other. Right. And we encourage Absolutely. each other because it's like, you know, we're all in this together. We start Everyone to serves and together we make a difference. <laughs> we definitely <laughs> do. Thank you, Linda, for saying that. Linda Crater, thank you so much for being with us today. We so appreciate it. Make sure um, uh, everybody joins us next week. We'll have another great conversation. We love these conversations and we're so glad that you are here with us for them. Be sure to tune in next week for Military Mom Talk Radio. Take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Military Mom Talk Radio. Want more information? Check us out at MilitaryMomTalkRadio.com or find us on iTunes for more than 200 free episodes. Drop us an email or find us on Facebook. We are looking forward to another great discussion. We hope you'll join us on Military Mom.